welcome to the History Law Channel. You join me here today in Richmond, just by the River Thames, but we're in a little back road called the Quadrant, and we're here behind the Richmond Theatre. Now, to dispel a myth, most people know that I'm not just a tour guide, but I'm also an actor as well, and uh, it's not always glamour. When I enter a theatre, I don't usually go through the front door, I go through the back door or the stage door. So this is the glamour that I'm used to, you see. Now, last time I worked here at the Richmond Theatre, which is what we're looking at today, um, was for a film, uh, a pilot show that never got commissioned, but I had three happy days working in this wonderful theatre, and that's what we're looking at today. Also, I'd like to say at this moment in time, as we are coming out of lockdown, hopefully very soon, and the theatres will be opening, it's a little plea from me to every one of the viewers, go to a theatre, whether it's a West End theatre, local theatre like this, a community theatre, all theatres after the lockdown will need your help. Now, today, I'm not going through the stage door, we're going to go back round the front and look at the glamorous side of the Richmond Theatre. Welcome to London. Now the present day Richmond Theatre stands here on Little Green, which is just next to the Green in Richmond. It was opened on the 18th of September 1899 with the Shakespeare play As You Like It. And it wasn't on a flight path back then, but it's on a flight path now. Now, its designer was the wonderful Frank Matcham, and I do think James and me should do a whole video about Frank Matcham in the future. What do you think? Good idea? I think so, but there you are. Now, it has been described as one of the most remarkable and complete Matcham theatres in London, and uh, I've got a quote here. John Earle, who was writing back in 1982, described it as outstanding importance as the most completely preserved Matcham theatre in Greater London and one of the most satisfying interiors. The theatre was originally known as the Theatre Royal and Opera House, and it's a familiar design with stalls, dress and upper circles. There's four boxes at dress level, and the auditorium is a mixture of wonderful gilt detailing and red plush fabrics. Its interior and exterior have been used in many films and movies over the years, including Evita, and in Topsy Turvy it stood in for the Victorian Savoy Theatre, in Finding Neverland it doubled as the Duke of York's Theatre, in National Treasure, Book of Secrets, it doubled as the Ford Theatre. It's also been seen in television programmes as well, from Jonathan Creek to New Tricks. In the early 1990s, the theatre underwent a major renovation, and it was overseen by the designer Carl Toms. This included a side extension, which gave more space for the audience, and included the matchroom room, which today, I believe, is now called the Ambassador's Lounge. The theatre is now owned by the Ambassador's Group. It usually, outside of lockdowns and uh, restrictions, has a weekly or bi-weekly programme of both plays and musicals. It also has the annual pantomime, and stars of stage, screen and musical have graced its stage for many of those pantos. But this wasn't the first theatre on Richmond Green. The first theatre was here in 1718, and it was built by an actor-manager called Mr Penkethman. What a fantastic name. There was an article in the St James's Evening Post of the 31st of May, 1718, and it advertised the building of a new theatre, and it says, We hear Mr Penkethman is building a handsome theatre in Richmond for the diversion of nobility and quality who attend the court of their Royal Highnesses, the Prince and Princess. Sounds very posh indeed. And by July that year, 1718, the theatre was opened. And once again, the St James's Evening Post was there to report the events. They said on the 29th of July, 1718, the day after, Last night, their Royal Highnesses, the Prince and Princess, were at Mr Penkethman's new theatre at Richmond to see the play of The Busybody, which was excellently performed. And there was a great appearance of quality and gentry. As I said, it sounded a very posh place to be indeed. Well, the theatre was remodelled in 1733 by another actor-manager called Chapman, but sadly it fell into disrepair and closed six years later. I do believe the site of that theatre is now in Duke's, uh, York's Place, it's York Place, which is over the other side of the Green. The second theatre on Richmond Green opened in 1765, and it was opened by a man called Sanderson. 
Well, he had the help of a actor manager called Mr. Love, which is a great name. But Mr. Love's real name was James Dance. Equally showbiz connections there. Well, it opened with uh, a comic opera that was called Love in a Village. Love was also the architect of the theatre as well, and it became a very famous place for actors of the time to come and perform their shows and plays. Thank you very much for watching today. If you do enjoy these videos, then please do subscribe. If you want to know when videos are uploaded, then please do see the little bell just down below. And if you want to see what we do outside these videos, please go to the description below to see about James's YouTube channel, which is Last Line Films, or have a look at my website, historylord.co.uk, and see about a walking tour of London. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Stay safe.